Good morning. Uh, welcome to St. Andrew's Anglican Church on this uh, 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, I sent a letter out to the parish that if you didn't get it yesterday, you'll probably get it on Monday. And I went through a lot of the projects that we've completed and uh, things that we have yet to finish uh, that are coming up. And as soon as I finished putting the last letter in the envelope, I could have kicked myself because I realized I had put stamps on and labels that I did not mention the Rowan Evans Memorial Roof and how that had come about following his wishes, uh, the four-step process, and that it was all the money that had been given in memorial for Rowan had been put to the roof and any shortfall was picked up and carried by his kids. And what a blessing that was. And I apologize that I did not put that in writing. So I wanted to get it this morning that I would say it. It's on video. So it is the truth. Uh, what a faithful family uh, and, and what a faithful man who uh, is, is still a dear friend to us all. Um, birthdays. Ron Macy is having a birthday this week, and Carol and Danny Maley are having an anniversary. Now, speaking of Ron Macy, I want to share with you a note that I received from uh, Ron and Terry. And this is what they said. Good morning, Father John, Marilyn, and our St. Andrew's family. And they know they will know we are Christians by our love. There's not enough ways to say thank you for your thoughts, prayers, and gifts that made it possible for us to start over. And again, their, all of their belongings were stolen. Our faith grew so much more knowing how much we are loved by our family in Georgia. We so miss our Wednesday evening meals and your teaching, Father John. We learn so much of God's word through you. Ron especially misses his lay Eucharistic minister duties. They meant so much to him. Looking forward to seeing you all during the holidays. You are all in our daily prayers. Love to all in Christ, Ron and Terry. I wanted to share that with you. Now, speaking of uh, Ron Macy, he was our junior warden. And when they left and went to Arkansas, George uh, Blampied took over the role of junior warden. But a seat was empty on the vestry. And uh, just this week, uh, it has been accepted and filled for the next year, for 2021. Jacob Lott has uh, accepted and is now a member of our vestry. And uh, so please keep him, as well as our whole vestry, in your prayers. I uh, wanted to share that with you as well. Uh, next week, we'll be collecting uh, for the uh, food drive for the food bank, Coffee County Food Bank. The box is in the back, the second to the last row and the list of uh, dry goods that are needed are here if you would like to take part in that. Uh, so if you would now please stand and turn to hymn 390 in the red hymnal, Praise to the Lord.
Our worship service begins this morning on page 123 of the prayer book, page 123, and we begin with the acclamation. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Please join me, kneeling if you are able, with the Collect for Purity found on page 124. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that by your grace we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now for the readings. As uh, Jay is making his way up here, there's one thing I wanted to let you know, and that is about Deacon Diane. She was going to try to be here today, but is afraid that there might be some rain. She came to visit me this past Friday and is getting around very well with a cane. And so she's enjoying her healing and her retirement. So please keep her in your prayers. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The fathers eat sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel. For every living soul belongs to me. The father as well as the son, both alike belong to me. The soul who sins is the one who will die. Yet you will say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear, O house of Israel, is my way unjust? Is it not your ways that are unjust? If a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits sin, he will die for it. Because of the sin he has committed, he will die. 
But if a wicked man turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he will save his life. Because he considers all the offenses he has committed and turns away from them, he will surely live. He will not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not just. Are my ways unjust, O house of Israel? Is it not your ways that are unjust? Therefore, O house of Israel, I will judge you. Each one according to his ways, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent. Turn away from all your offenses. Then sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent and live. The word of the Lord. Please join with me, Psalm 25, prayed responsively by half verse. Unto you, O Lord, will I lift up my soul. My God, I have put my trust in you. O oh, let me not be ashamed, neither let my enemies triumph over me. For all those who hope in you shall not be ashamed. But those who deal unfruitly shall be put to confusion. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your Lead me forth in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. I will praise you all the day long. Call to remembrance, O Lord, your tender mercies. And your loving kindnesses to the Lord. O oh, remember not the sins and offenses of my youth. But according to your mercy, think on me, O Lord, in your goodness. Gracious and righteous is the Lord. Those who are meek shall he guide in judgment. And those who are gentle shall he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. To those who keep his covenant and his testimony. For your name's sake, O Lord. Forgive my sin for its grace. Who is the one who fears the Lord? He shall teach him the way that he shall choose. He shall dwell at ease. The Lord reveals his secret counsel to those who fear him. And he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord. For he shall pluck my feet out of the hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and is now, for all our end. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke to them, saying, What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work to me today at the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his what father wanted? First, they answered. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. The tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness. And he did not believe it. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day. We thank you for the truth that you have put upon our hearts, that you have put upon the written word, that the words of your Son we can take to the bank. Lord, bless us. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your holy word, that we would respond according to your will and not ours. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. If you remember, a few weeks ago, I spoke to you about Jesus and his apostles at a place called Caesarea Philippi. It's up in the north of Israel and not far from the Lebanon border. How Peter responded to Jesus' question of who they say that he is. So much happened to these apostles in just a few weeks as three of them witnessed the wonderful transfiguration of Jesus in his holy glowing along with Moses and Elijah. And then they headed off to Jerusalem and experienced Palm Sunday, the Last Supper, and the arrest and execution of our Lord Jesus Christ. Their heads must have been absolutely spinning, especially when Jesus rose from the dead and visited them that same day in the upper room. And then 40 days later, they witnessed him ascend to the Father from the Mount of Olives, right across the Kidron Valley from the city of Jerusalem. As if that were not enough, just a week after that, 50 days after Passover, the Holy Spirit came to them as a rushing wind, washing over them on the day of Pentecost, and changed everything. They were new people. They were emboldened and filled with the confidence that what they were preaching about Jesus was not only true, but transforming lives of those who heard the truth and believed. That transforming power has touched each one of us as well. So let me rewind just a bit to today's Holy Gospel, the reading from Matthew. Jesus is still alive, and he shares a parable about two sons who answer their father's request to go work in the vineyard. Each one answers differently, and then go and do the exact opposite of their response. Can you imagine someone saying that they're going to do something and go and do the exact opposite? Have you ever witnessed that? I think sometimes some of us get to see some of that. Now, this is not only isolated to children. We're all shining examples of saying one thing and sometimes doing another. I would venture to say that there's not one of us here today who has not done this at one time or another in our life. Sure, sure, I'll be there. And then, ta-da, empty seat. If you found out about the greatest new little shop in town or a new restaurant with great food that does take out, You don't necessarily have to go and sit in these days of COVID. And they've got wonderful prices. Or you heard about a movie that interested you. 
that you can rent online without having to go into the movie theater, wouldn't you share that with friends? I would say that the majority of people here today or watching this service online are thinking to themselves, of course, sure I'd do that. So I've got to ask you, why is it so hard for people to tell others about the most incredible person in their life, Jesus of Nazareth, or about the church that they go to and how it has and continues to change your life? This is what I have difficulty understanding. I can't help but wonder why we cannot do the same when it comes to sharing our faith. And this is nothing new to us today. It was the same in Jesus' day. People haven't changed all that much. God presented his message of salvation to the Jewish leaders first through John the Baptist, and they rejected it. But the scorned sinners, tax collectors, and prostitutes received that message with open arms and open hearts. The Jewish leaders' claim of serving God and being faithful to the Torah went along with them being the religious leadership for the people. But in fact, these leaders were not obedient to God. They totally rejected the message of John the Baptist just as they rejected the message of Jesus of Nazareth, enough to want to have him killed. Why is it that the scorned sinners, with no claim to righteousness whatsoever, believed both John the Baptist and the message from Jesus? That's why Jesus said that they were entering the kingdom of God. These people knew that they were the ones who were desperately in need of grace. I'm quite sure that they told their friends of the good news that they had received and how it affected their lives. For Jesus, doing the will of the Father is a matter of words and a matter of deeds, too. It's one thing to say one does or will do the will of the Father, but it's another to actually do it. Words alone mean absolutely nothing. My father used to have a term for that, lip service. That what comes out of your lips doesn't necessarily come through your hands. The apostle J uh, James reminds us, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. When you say yes, then go and do it. Remember I told you last week that it's not about earning your way to heaven through works? The work has already been done once on the cross at Calvary by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we should be so gratefully obedient that we want to do for him out of gratitude to share him and his love with others all for his glory and not for ours. And so I come back to that earlier question. How is it then that we can share our favorite things and places with people and stories, but we can't get up and share Jesus with others? I, believe, I, I know today I'm preaching to the choir, to some people that are present here that do that in their lives every day. And I believe that God has is more impressed by our performance than our promises. There's that lip service again. To put it more plainly, God's not interested by our saying one thing and doing another, or our waiting until we get around to it. I'm sure you know of somebody, maybe even yourself, who when pressed to a difficult situation, promises God everything they have if he will just get them to a better place and do the thing that they need the most. Heal that friend of theirs, that relative of theirs. And when he delivers them from their distress, they soon forget about the promise that they made. They forget their vow. And they get right back to business as usual. Good intentions. You know what they say? The road to <coughs> Hades is paved with good intentions. New Year's resolutions. Promises, I'm going to lose this many. I'm going to get on the treadmill and work. And then, yeah, right. People volunteering to serve on committees. And then forgetting about them altogether. 
promises to read your Bible every day and not opening it even once. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not pointing fingers because you know what they say about pointing fingers. When you point fingers, I want to make sure I'm not pointing at anybody, I'll point at the wall. When you point a finger at somebody, there's three more pointing right back at you. Okay? We don't want that. Not at all. Jesus wants us to make good on our intentions, on our promises, on our commitments. And we have to look and take a good look at our commitments and see and examine who we really are. We need to be fruitful. And so we must have a faith that acts and brings forth fruit because just as James said in his epistle, faith without works is dead, James 2, 26. We're called to be Jesus' disciples, to act now through being obedient. The time to obey is right now. Now let me put it to you this way. If you were to delay stopping at a stop sign, a whole bunch of things could happen. Well, first of all, you might get a ticket. Second of all, you could get in an accident. Or you could have a close call and wind up just barely escaping an accident. The point is that we're fruitful when we are obedient, not procrastinating and are disobeying the Lord. Please, be as good as your promises and your commitments. When we obey, we bear much fruit. When we're not obeying, we come across as someone blinded and end up leading others who are also blind astray. The religious leaders of Israel did not act on God's word through John the Baptist and Jesus, and so the repentant sinners would be able to enter the kingdom of heaven ahead of them or instead of them. The difference between the religious leaders and the repentant sinners is just one thing, the O word obedience. Jesus once said this, as recorded in Matthew 12, 30. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. We agree to obey and work in God's vineyard, his kingdom here on earth. When we do that, we are working and gathering with Jesus Christ and for him. I want to close today with the words of Jesus Christ as recorded in Matthew 5, 37. He simply said this, let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask you now to please stand and open your prayer book to page 127 and let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask you now, kneeling if you are able, to please turn to page 128 for the prayers of the people. prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our for Foley, our Archbishop, and Neil, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Donald, our president, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Today we especially pray for Jake, Stone, Meg, Elizabeth, Addison, Leela, Tamara, Kim, Denny, Candom, David, Jackson, Ralph, Ashley, Joshua, Deacon Diane, Doris, Jennifer, Henry, John, Jim, Terry, Ron, Suzanne, Doug, Linda, Kevin, Jacqueline, Tim, Jackie, Rhonda, Ken, Bishop Neal, and all who protect our freedom at home and abroad. I invite you to add your own request at this time. Mary Jo. Lord, we continue to thank you and lift up all medical staff, first responders, and all those who are dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for wisdom among all your people, that we would proceed wisely and safely, caring for one another. We especially pray that you, Lord, will use all of this as a way to turn many to yourself, as you use all things for good. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection in the thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now turning to page 130, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
And the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. God bless you all. Please be seated. Just to mention that our, our offering plates are here. We don't pass them during this COVID situation. Uh, we give thanks to the Lord for all gifts that have been given to the church um, for his ministry, uh, whether it is here or whether it's by time, treasure, talents, or on our website. Uh, we are grateful. And as Gray will be playing in just a little bit, the doxology, you know, praise God from whom all blessings flow, we are thankful for all gifts. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. An offer and sacrifice. Turning to page 132 of the prayer book, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. Our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are
Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, so that he may dwell in us and we in him. And bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Now, turning to page 135 in the prayer book, let us pray together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy.
dear brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body and blood of Jesus. Turning to page 677 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray together for all those people who cannot physically receive the Holy Communion that we will come into spiritual communion with them. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church. And I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
thankful and grateful words. It is well with my soul. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you today and always. Amen. I ask you now to please stand and turn to hymn 410 in the red hymnal. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven.